On this episode, we answer a question that surely has been burning on your lips. Where are the pickups? As always, we go too far. <laughs> Chunky Chunky. <laughs> but in the end, there is tremendous dancing. Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Desk Academy. I, if I count correctly, this is episode 26. It's crazy. It's crazy how far we've come. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so today we are going to do... Um, oops. We're going to continue work on our shmup. There's one last big feature that I wanted to address today. Uh, let us go through the to-do list and kind of like to kind of like see where we've uh, uh, where we came from and where we're going. So we have enemy bullets, um, we have aim shots and spread shots. That's good. We have um, okay, the pickups is something and bombs is something something that we might do today. Then there's gonna be boss. That's something that comes afterwards, not today. Um, there's also scoring, which I, maybe I want to do before boss. Uh, let's see about that and. Um, yeah, nicer screens is something something that's good to have. So right, uh, pickups and bomb. Mm, there's one other thing. Uh, in a previous doggy zone, uh, it was all about creating new levels. Uh, because I actually want to test the gameplay. I think we we've assembled a lot of features now, and we actually never really, really like tested the entire gameplay. And I wanted to begin with that. Uh, so actually we had like two doggy zones now that where I said like okay design some levels so it's it's kind of like it's it's time to actually uh, for me uh, to actually uh, hoop in so with each level I'm not gonna actually give it a name uh, so I'm gonna call this space invaders this is gonna be level number zero uh, or number one I guess and this is a very simple level um, I just want to have uh, like a screen full of green guys and um and you know a, a bit more squarish so it looks like space invaders generally the idea is that i wanted to start uh, the game with something that is very familiar to the audience and i think this is going this is going to be a, a good level um i'm actually going to keep this this level around here that i actually created here that's because you know i, I have some levels that i already designed previously for the for a prototype uh, of screen here that i'm using as inspiration but I'm not necessarily going to just copy and paste those. I'm, maybe I'm going to keep around some of them that I actually already created, or maybe I'm going to create some new ones. Um, right. So um, here is like, I, I would call this like a red tutorial. Um, after the first level where we had something very familiar, I want to introduce some new elements, something like, okay, there's going to be interesting things happening throughout this game. And I think this is a good one. It's just like a whole bunch of red guys mixed in with the green guys, right? Um, so I think this is good. Um, now this is um, the first level where we brought in the um, the, um, uh, the the spinny guys, right? And this one has some red guys in it, and I don't like that. I'm just gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this a level very simple with. Oh, now I put. Oops, I made everything red. Uh, I'm gonna keep this level very simple. I'm gonna fill the center with green guys, and the outer layers is gonna be the spinny guys. And um, I want uh, the spinny guys generally to be often on the outside. So you have like the columns of threes here. I want the spinny guys to be on the outside because the spinny guys are kind of really difficult when they're like coming straight at you. And so having them at the outside, it kind of gives you a time to uh, to react to them. But maybe we're going to have one tutorial where this, uh, or one uh, level where the spinny guys are coming from the center. That's going to be it might be might be quite difficult. Uh, so I'm going to call this a spin tutorial. Now previously this was uh, the boss level. I'm going to call this the boss level now. This is going to be the final one, uh, boss. Um, right now it spawns one yellow guy, but it will eventually spawn, <laughs> spawn our actual boss. Um, right. So um, another thing, I'm not gonna, I'm not caring about the numbers right now. I'm just like, like creating some, some, uh, some, some. Uh, uh, actually, no. I'm, I'm gonna actually number them so we know how many we have. Four, five. Uh, how many do I want to have? I want um, basically, I want the final wave, the boss wave. Um, to be wave number nine and the rest we're going to fill in with other things so i want a level that introduces the yellow guys 
Uh, so I'm going to call this yellow tutorial. And I think it's cool to have just one yellow guy. Uh, just one yellow guy kind of flanked by... So it's kind of defended by green guys. So you have to shoot the green guys to get to the yellow guy. So it's kind of like a, a yellow guy with kind of like an entourage of, of green guys defending him. Uh, and maybe it's going to be even a bit additionally white. That that's, might be look interesting. That's actually not how I designed my... Uh, how to design this level in a prototype. And the edges, uh, there's going to be a gap, so so it's always clear that this is no, the yellow guy is the one that, that is supposed to be, uh, that you're supposed to pay attention to. Uh, but I'm going to fill out the flanks with, again, with green guys. The green guys are the safe guys. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like really uh, clear what is happening there. Right, right, right. So, hmm, what else can we do that is interesting? Well, I have a design for a level that is kind of like nightmare-ish, uh, and I'm gonna like just like just throws everything at you, uh, and I'm, I might add one that one. So it's um, uh, colors. Let's call it double yellow, and that design goes something like this. So I want to have two yellow guys in this level. Um, so yellow guys are uh, number four, right? So uh, we're always spawning the yellow guy like this. So um, the yellow guys are in the corners. Then I have behind the yellow guys, there's going to be spinny guys. So even if you defeated the yellow guy, there's still some spinny guys that you have to defeat in front of our green guys to kind of like shield them. Uh, I do have like some, uh, some uh, uh, corridors in between. That's good. Uh, nine is we don't have any nines and then in the middle um yes a pattern like this maybe we're going to add some red guys in here and we're going to fill everything with green guys in the end actually i think it might be fun to just add some red guys in the in the uh like a layer of red guys and then maybe green guys here something like this double yellow um, and there's another level which actually this turned out to be more dangerous than the double yellow which is kind of like uh let's call this hell um, <laughs> I don't know if it's that was that difficult, but yeah, like uh, a lot of people, uh, when I did the prototype, I did some uh, playtesting with some friends, like, you know, just like roughly getting an idea what's happening. And a lot of people reported that uh, the be beginning was really easy and it was like smooth sailing. And then suddenly they felt like a rise of difficulty. And, and especially at the end, um, there was a rise of difficulty. And I think that these two levels, double yellow and hell, they were kind of like responsible for this. And hell is not even that hellish. I mean, it has um, it has spinny guys in the edges, and it's it is f chock full of of red guys, which you know, as we already said, they fire the aimed bullets. So that is that is bad, right? So a layer of of red guys, and then the a backbone of it doesn't even have a yellow guy. Right, something like this. So, like a huge, like backbone of green guys, and then just like two healthy rows of of spinning guys in the center. And then it's not that the complicated level, but I, th I think it's the huge amount of of red guys that really made this a bit difficult. Right. So let's see how many uh, levels we need. So one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. So two more levels. Uh, one level that design that I really like. It's not really difficult to play, but it's kind of like I, I think it's fun, uh, and that's something that we have to put after the spin tutorial. Uh, I'm not thinking too much about the arrangement. We're gonna t talk about think about this later, mm, but we're gonna call this chess, and it's just like a pattern of you know um, repeating. Um, it's kind of like alternating the different enemy designs, like really mixing them through. So it's, there's no, the enemies don't spawn in like chunks, but they're kind of all like mixed and together everywhere. Um, and I think this is, this looks a bit chaotic and it's interesting. It's interesting to just like, because it's difficult to read what's happening. I'm just going to fill everything with ones for now, uh, because I think f designing from the ones is going to be easier. So let's just fill everything with ones. Right. Okay, and then let's see. So we have green here, two here. Right, here's going to be a three, 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 three. So there is going to be a lot of spinny guys, definitely. 
Uh, it's not a necessarily an easy level, but the spinning guys are going to be internally mixed with the green guys, and that makes them slightly, it's, it's kind of dilutes the dangerousness, I feel. On the other hand, again, it might not be easy to just take them all out because they're all uh, embedded kind of like in the matrix of, <laughs> of green guys. So so that's, that's I think it's, it's interesting design here that we have here. So let's, let's just count again, just, just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm, but I forgot, um, the boss level doesn't count, so we still need two more. Um, let me try another design that I liked, which is, I think it might be fun to just have create like a huge wave of red. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, uh, just using red and green because you want to have maybe um, some, some kind of level in between that kind of like challenges you a little bit. Um, so we're gonna let's call this wall of red. Uh, I haven't just tried it yet. Maybe that's actually nightmarish, but um, I kind of like it's it's fun to just have like a whole bunch of reds and just a few greens in the, in the back. I think that that might be fun. Uh, yeah, just like this uh, wall of red. Um, um, it might be actually easy to kill them because they're supposed not to have enough, um, a lot of health, but yeah, let's try that, let's try that. Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, it, it comes and comes out well. Okay, so nine is the boss level, so that's good. So there's gonna be nine level in total, or actually eight level and then the boss. And from my playtesting, that felt okay. Um, you do kind of don't wanna overstate your welcome unless you have something new and interesting to show uh, in gameplay-wise. Like if I had more enemies, maybe I would be inclined to maybe try something uh, longer. Uh, but also maybe then I would also think about how to mix up the gameplay a little bit, maybe give different goals or so forth. Just like gut feeling wise, eight levels felt okay. Um, but we're gonna figure this out because maybe, you know, that was my prot prototype, that was my doggy zone prototype, but maybe this prototype is gonna, is gonna roll differently. Let's, let's just play the game. Uh, but before we play the game, I also wanted to tweak the health of the different enemies. So let us go to the... Uh, 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 the spawning function right here. So the green alien, I said it, I I, I thought it's it gonna be a bit spongy. So it actually takes a little bit to, to shoot down, not too long, but like, you know, like not just one shot. So I, I'm, I'm gonna give it three health points. The red flame guy, I'm gonna get two points. So less to, to kill, but not quite as easy as it's currently. The spinning shit gets gonna get four. It's actually difficult to shoot down. So it's gonna be actually quite a challenge to take it on. Um, and the, um, well, that's the boss. It's, we're going to call this yellow guy, uh, and that's going to be that's going to have twenty because that's going to be this. This it's a chunky boy. It takes a while to shoot at this guy. Let's just try to play this game. Let's just see if this works now. Uh, let's see wave number zero. Let's start at zero. Let's play this game. Whoa! Oh yeah, <laughs> we had some kind of shaking happening. Uh, let's make the shake to zero. Okay. I have uh, some kind of debug also being run through this game. Right, so off the bat, this is a slower game than, than what we had were used from the from the testing. Uh, we were just going through enemies with uh, like you know hot butter through knife, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, I, I, we might have been just gotten used to the fact that that. Uh, it's easy to just go through these levels, and I want the players to actually spend some time on the level. If you can just like shoot everything down, then there's no point. And yeah, that's good. That's, this is good. This is good stuff. I kind of like the shooting frequency. This kind of works well. All right, so this is the kind of like oh, I, we haven't actually ordered the level, so so actually this might be bad. I lost a life here. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so this, these are the spinny guys. I'm gonna actually take care of the spinny guys now. Okay, so now it's just green guys left, and uh, so cleaning up everything is cool and peachy. All right, this is this is the wall of red that we just designed. That I actually have. Oh, that's actually spicy. <laughs> that's actually spicy. That's a spicy level. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, red guys are so aggressive. But luckily, they easy to shoot down. Oh no, it's, it's the game is over. <laughs> 
Um, so let me um, let me set. Um, so we're gonna create something called last wave. It's gonna be a variable that says what's the last wave, and if you know if we reach the last wave and finish the last wave, then we then we um, end the game. Uh, and then uh, when we did the waves in enemies to see, that's why you do the test runs and everything. You just uh, to iron out all the kinks. Um, all right. So when we do next wave, if wave is greater than a last wave, then we win the game like uh, this. Let me actually, now that we are here, let me uh, rearrange uh, a little bit some of the levels. So the red tutorial comes right after, that's good. But maybe afterwards we're going to show the, the wall of red before we do the spin tutorial, because I don't want to have like tutorial end to end. I want to actually, you know, explore a little bit the capabilities of different, different enemies. And I th felt the red was a bit spicy. So it's kind of might, might be enough, kind of fun to have a, a bit more tricky level early on. Right, so this is going to be three and then four. The spin tutorial sounds good. Um, then five, chess, um, chess yellow, let's, let's just call it chess. Uh, chess uh, is good, then yellow tutorial, that's good, then double yellow. Okay, yeah, that seems good. And then after double yellow, hell. The interesting thing is that hell doesn't actually have any yellow guys. Maybe I should put yellow guys in hell. <laughs> let's see how that works out. <laughs> Oh yeah, while I'm here, because it will drive just drive me crazy. I'm gonna delete the the debugging uh, that was in the uh, I thought it was the debugging. That's not debugging. Oh my gosh, I thought it was debugging. I thought I thought it was print. It was not print, it was P set. Here is the print. Are we drawing the shake? Let's try it. All right, so once more uh, with Gusto. Yeah, 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 no, this is this feels good. Something we haven't actually touched at all is uh, the movement speed of the ship. And that's kind of weird. We just like pick some movement speed and then just run with it. Um, because that's, I feel like this maybe we should have um, experimented or more with the movement speed. But on the other hand, if it's not broke, why don't why fix it, right? It's, it, it feels good to play. And so what's the problem? Right, so again, Wall of Red, m m uh, it was spicy at first, so let's see if I still have the same problem. It's kind of easy to track the, the bullets if, if you pay attention to them, but so maybe that's something that, that's why I had the problems, I was not really paying attention to the bullets. Yeah, generally, it's, right now, it's not a, a difficult map by any means, but that's okay. Uh, you kind of have to think about what is going to be the internet experience. Uh, and I I don't want this to be something that, that you slave away, you know, for hours. Oh, see, I, oh, the guy got me. Uh, I want it to be something that you can possibly beat, you know, in an hour. Or even less, like maybe, you know, you just play it three times and just beat it and then you will walk away happy about that. You won't be like, oh no, I've beaten this game. Ugh. At least most people won't want to think that. Okay, this is actually interesting because it's so difficult to kind of like see what uh, what threats are. <laughs> it's kind of difficult to even keep track of what, what it even is currently active. But no, this is good. This was a good. This was a good level. All right, then so introducing the yellow guys. Uh, I want to actually the yellow guy to shoot. Oh, see, this is a bit of a problem. Maybe we need to address this. So the yellow guys are there and they're interesting and they have very deadly weapons, but they're not much of a threat because the chance that they're going to get picked for shooting are kind of low. So we want to maybe have a, a function that um, prefers to, the yellow guys to shoot. Okay, I'm getting rid of the guys in the center here. Okay, here's the yellow guy attacking. And yeah, that's that's actually quite a challenge here. Uh, oh man, he got me. The the spinny guys, if you if they approach you and you don't shoot them out quickly enough, that's that they that's that's difficult. Okay, so that's the level that actually I end up having the most difficulties with. Oh I can't tell why. <laughs> And then, yeah, it's good. I ran out of lives. I, I mean, I was not really like 
that, that I wasn't giving my hundred percent. That was that was just like I don't know, maybe maybe forty percent. But um, uh, that's I think it's a good sign if somebody that's so experienced with the game mechanics, if um, you know, just casually playing the game, I'm actually can run out of lives. That means that it, it there's difficulty there. There the game pushes against you. You have to actually concentrate. Uh, and you just don't get any, you know, not necessarily get freebies. It's generous, but not too generous. Um, yeah, so let us do the thing that I was talking about. I don't like how the yellow guys are getting omitted. Um, if, if there's a yellow guy on the screen, I definitely want them to fire. Or I want a high probability of them firing. Um, so let us go to the... It's the behavior, right? Or is it bullets? No, it's the behavior. Uh, when we do pick fire, right? Right. So what I want here is I want to maybe loop through all of the enemies and see if we're going to find a, uh, a yellow guy. And then maybe I'm going to trigger the yellow guy. And if the yellow guy is not triggered or if we don't find a yellow guy, then we're going to proceed with our, with the rest of our, um, of, of, of the code. So we're going to go like, let's go like for I equals Mm. Now, for um, my n, uh, oh gosh, I forgot how to program. For my n in all, yeah, that, that's how it worked. <laughs> um, in enemies, we're going to look for all of the enemies, too. And then we're going to go if, uh, if uh, my n dot type, if that's four, that means we found a yellow guy. I mean, it's not the best code in the world. I mean, it's not like you could, like there's, ideally you would create maybe a list of yellow guys, uh, like an array of yellow guys that just has the yellow guys in it. And we would check if there's even yellow guys. And then we would like make a decision and then we could pick a random guy from the yellow guy list. But this is just like a hot and messy implementation. So we're gonna do, if we found a yellow guy, we're gonna go like if R and D, uh, it's smaller than 0 0.5. Um, so in, we're gonna we're gonna flip a coin, and if um, that coin comes up yellow guy, <laughs> then that yellow guy will fire the bullet. Uh, it's gonna be this this code, and uh, we're gonna return like this. So generally, the when the yellow guys are on the screen, they will prefer to fire um, but there's chance that even if the yellow guys on the screen you know all all the coin flips come up uh, empty and then we're just going to do our regular firing um i want to skip directly to the wave with the yellow guys so one two three four five six i think that's yellow six uh five uh, so yeah six but we have to set put in five right so i want to see i want to see this in action I want to see the yellow guy shooting frequently. Yeah, he does shoot frequently. Yeah, that's good. I'm thinking maybe more bullets because if the yellow guy is so far off screen, like so far in distance, then maybe you know just like six bullets don't really move the needle. Uh, let, let me make them him a bit more dangerous. Um, because like if we if we set our minds to it, you know he won't be long for this world. Uh, it's it's kind of easy to shoot him down if you concentrate your fire. Mm, and uh, the same here, it's just it's increasing the number of bullets of um, number of bullets to twelve. Let's see how that works. Yeah, that seems good. By the time the bullets arrive, it looks dangerous. But but by the time the bullets arrive uh, where I am, where I'm hanging out. It's 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 uh, they're not that not that dense anymore. Now I want to. It's funny that, that I was avoiding the, the spread shots, but uh, but the you know the single bullets here that that's the real danger. Okay, so I want to see how two guys look like. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's that's good. That's that that's very good. Oh, the spinny guys, the spinny guys are, oh, now the guy, oh, <laughs> now he's attacking, oh, <laughs> uh, 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 oh, no, oh, no, oh, interesting, right, 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 something that to, to keep in mind, um, so if you find him, the yellow guy, 
um, I want uh, to make sure that uh, his mission is also protect. Um, we don't want to trigger already um, attacking yellow guys because they are uh, already firing like crazy. So the, making them fire even more would be is, is kind of it's kind of not not that great. Uh, especially since the you know the distance fire has more bullets. If the guy when the guy starts actually doing the attack run, then. His bullets are, um, he doesn't fire as many bullets anymore, and that's good. That's something that you want. Come on, I want I want a yellow guy to do the attack run. Oh, there we go. He come, He's coming! A lot, he's coming! I just want to see how that looks like. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I did not shoot him down. Okay, let's see if we can finish this, this this game. It is very rewarding to play. There's just the explosion and the, the feedback. Um, uh, it, it, it's just like it's very hypnotic to play, and there's just just enough engagement to kind of like keep your, keep your reflexes uh, engaged. Great. Excellent. So, um, yeah, let us move on to the actual topic of this episode. I want to do pickups. Uh, why do I want to pickups? Uh, we play through the game and it's fine as it is. It, you don't necessarily need pickups, but with certain features, it's often, often like this. You don't know when you're missing it often and till you have it and then it's a lot better. So I think it's good to, um, and I was like, you know, when I was doing the first prototype in my doggy zone, I was like, man, did I really need pickups? I mean, it was just add another episode to an already growing uh, tutorial. But then I added pickups and I was like, no, okay, no, we totally have to have pickups. So let's do pickups. Uh, the reason why pickups are great is, and that's a bit of a uh, very short game design, uh, inside speech kind of thing. Uh, uh, so far, all of the elements that we have in our shmup, and then generally, like a lot of shmups have similar elements to this, are kind of like pushing players away. Um, there, there's lots of dangers in this game, right? And they're just pushing away. Don't go here. Uh, move out of the way. There's a bullet coming. Uh, move out of the way. There's an enemy coming. Everything is is trying to get the player out and push them away. So it's kind of like you tend to be very defensive, or being defensive is maybe a, a, a posture that the game is pushing the player in towards. With the pickups, it's the opposite. It's like, hey, here's something. Can you get it? You know, it's like, come closer, right? Like it pulls the player more into the screen, into the game. Uh, and you will get, if you get pickups into, into the, this kind of mix, you get the push and pull, right? On the other hand, things that are trying to push play the player away, but also um, things that are trying to pull the player into the game and maybe into danger, right? So I think um, that's the, that's the, theory behind pickups to have like an, something that pulls the player, not just something that pushes away the player. Right, um, so I have created here a, um, a little array and we're gonna fill that array with, uh, you name it, with objects, that's how it works. <laughs> um, so where are we going to put, I'm not, uh, can I put another tab? Uh, see if I, I, I'm gonna have, if you have more than uh, then seven tabs, then the, step, the tab starts scrolling and I don't like that. I want to have seven tabs in total and um, I want to reserve an entire tab for the, for, the, for the boss. So maybe we're going to just put it in tools. It's fine. Do we even need, because I was thinking maybe dr creating a function that is like drop pickup, but maybe we don't need one. We're just going to put it in the update function. That's going to be fine maybe. Um, so the idea is, oh yeah, 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 we're going to put it in the kill enemy function. So because the pickups are coming and you have to think about, you know, what the pickups are, are going to be, but, but I'm thinking we're going to put the pickups in uh, where um, the enemy is, uh, see, but uh, you know what, I'm going to put this function right here under, underneath kill and I'm going to call this function drop, drop pickup. Uh, and then it's, it's gonna get an X and Y as, uh, let's call this PX, pi X and PIX and PI. Um, and then we're gonna do, uh, you know, we're gonna do the same thing that we always do when we add objects. 
So I'm going to actually look at how we do it when we when we create objects elsewhere. Just yeah, spawn n here, right? Make sprite. That was the thing I was looking for. Make sprite was the function. So we're going to create a make sprite. Drop pickup. Uh, we are going to, and it's not going to be n my n, but it's going to be my pick. My pick. Uh, we're going to put x and y in picks and pi. Uh, we're going to give my pick a um, sy and that's going to be 0 0.5. It will slowly move down the screen. My pick will definitely get a sprite. Um, we don't have a sprite yet, so we have to actually draw a pickup. So I had an idea and this is a, this is a bit of a crazy idea. Um, I don't like, I, I generally don't like, um, or I'm suspicious of how uh, of the of the kind of pickups that you usually have in shmups. Uh, the pickups and that you usually have in shmups are kind of boring. They usually kind of some kind of like energy canister, you know, an energy shield, some kind of energy thing, some kind of very abstract. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Mm, I want to have cherries. I want to have uh, <laughs> I want to have something that is more tangible, uh, something that people recognize as ah, it's 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 a cherry. Um, it, 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 on, on the one hand, it feels kind of like more, you know, arcadey. It comes from Pac-Man. Pac-Man had also fruit and the fruit was always like, what, what, why does he have fruit? I don't know, but it was good. Um, um, but also, again, I want it to kind of feel, um, I want the actual game to feel a bit more, um, um, yeah, I, I want the player to be to be looking or to be trying to pick up something that is more um, real, that 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 is an object that your players are familiar with and not just you know uh, something crazy. Right, something like this. Uh, I'm not sure about the color. Is maybe this green better? No, no, I like the other green. That kind of makes the the, the red pop a little bit. I'm trying to find out um, a, a good setup for the leaves. Maybe something like this. Nah. Nah. I think let's let's just leave it at this. I think these are good cherries. Um, but maybe, maybe it can, can be even better cherries. What if we make the, them spread further apart? Is that is that maybe better? Is that maybe a, a better cherry if you do it like this? Now it looks a bit like shadowy, but that's okay maybe. Now one cherry is bigger than the other. That, that's something that bothers me now, but it, it doesn't seem too bad. Nah, 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 nah. I don't, I don't. I mean, it's just like pushing some pixels around, but yeah, you you gotta have to try some things. Okay, let's just leave it at here, and let's just try to make this cherry work. Um, Forty-eight. Let's go in the behavior. Kill enemy. Um, drop pickup. SBR equals forty-eight. Good. Update. So yeah, going through all of the motions that we have with the other things. So let us do, well, before we do the collision, collision, collision uh, when we like, for example, here, when we move the e-balls, uh, let's just move the pickups. And let's just go for um, my pick in all pickups. We're gonna move, we're not gonna animate actually. And yeah, if it leaves the screen, uh, it only will probably leave the screen on the lower edge of the screen. So we're not going to even check for the other ones. And then we're going to do... Uh, oh, pick pick us, pick, uh, pick ups. There we go. Uh, so if it leaves the bottom uh, edge of the screen, then we're just going to delete it. And that's it. So that's moving the pickups, but we also want to have a collision with the pickups. Um, and let's, let's go after all, the, all of the other collisions. So we're gonna uh, loop through all of them. Uh, invulnerability doesn't actually count, so that's okay. Um, uh, 
uh, collision pick up with ships. Uh, we're gonna um, loop through all of them and all uh, pickups. Now we could do uh, we looping through the pickups twice now, but I think that's okay. I don't think that's that's too bad. Um, I I kind of it's kind of nice that if if the, those two tasks are kind of separated from each other, but maybe maybe you think differently. And if you want the efficiency, then you can combine checking for collision with the ship and animation uh, in, into one. That's okay. So yeah, we're colliding and might make a pick up with the ship. And we, if it is collided, then um, we're gonna delete the pickup, like we did here. Um, 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 um. And when we delete the pickup, we want to, of course, um, we want to increase a variable. Uh, so at the start game, um, uh, let's go where the score lives. Um, ch cherry, we're gonna call this cherry. No, let's we're gonna we call this share. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's take share and, and increase share by one when we collide with a pickup. Um, uh, there we go, share plus equal one. Now, uh, another thing that I want to do is uh, we're not drawing the pickup, I think, so let's draw the pickups. Um, we are going to draw the pickups where? Uh, definitely below the bullets. The bullets are not as important. Um, the question is below or above the enemies. Let's behind, draw them before the enemy, so the enemies are actually covering up the, the pickups. They're not the pickups are not that important. So drawing pickups for my pick in all pickups. And yeah, that's gonna be draw my sprites. That's it. Um, there's there's going to be a twist, don't worry. Um, but for now, I want to also draw, actually, you know, do the UI work. I want to actually print the amount of pickups that we have. So we're going to print, um, uh, we're actually going to print share. Uh, and we're going to print it uh, 14. Uh, we're going to print it, uh, yeah, that's fine. One pixel from the edge or the top, of, top edge of the screen, but it's like at 110 or something like this. And then also uh, to, in, to indicate that this is a, a counter of, of, of a pick of the cherries, I'm going to do something like SPR 48. Um, then it's something like 102 and one. So I'm going to draw the pickup sprite actually in the UI as an indicator. This is the amount of pickups. Uh, and then again, the number of pickups um, is going to be in in uh, in a pink color because I think maybe ma matching that well. Uh, okay, this is good. Um, I think the pickup has to be higher. The, the sprite has to be higher. And now I think they both need to go a little bit further down the road. Something like here, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe a bit too much though. Uh, so let's just uh, room. Let's just. I'm just like, trying to position it nicely. Yeah, I think this is this is good. Maybe maybe the um, sprite has to be like like this. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'm thinking maybe tweaking the sprite still a little bit. I feel like it might not be ideal. I feel like we might use the brighter. Um, uh, brighter green and let's maybe do something like this. Yes, yes, this would might be better. This might be better. And then maybe this is gonna be like this color. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh I know, is this recognizable as a choice? You guys tell me. I don't it's sometimes with a little pixel art you, you never really know if that's if that's the thing. maybe if we go like this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This looks good. Separate them a little bit more so that it's more clear that they're individual objects. Maybe something like this. Yes. No. Uh, I don't like. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. And then yes, yes. This is this is better. 
See, sometimes breakthroughs come after another iteration. Oh, this is this is definitely a cherry. Oh, this is a cherry if I ever saw one. Um, I don't like how the cherry now touches the edge, top edge of the screen. So maybe we can just move all of them down. It's not going to be aligned with the score, um, but oops. Oh, maybe maybe that's actually okay. Uh, whatever. I'm just gonna. I, yeah, sorry. I'm just. That's that. But that's what I do, right? I just like when I when I do these things myself, I, I end up tweaking everything. Right. So where are the cherries? We're killing the 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 players, but we're not actually getting any cherries, uh, because we have to. When we kill an enemy, we have to actually uh, call a drop pickup. Oops. <laughs> I hit the table. Where are the pickups? Oh, right, right. I, I, I have to actually drop them at the position of the enemy. <laughs> is, it, is it now? Is that was that the problem? Still not appearing. Ah. Oh. oh, we're not adding the pickup to the. <laughs> Somebody was shouting on the like to the screen like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Add and pickups. My pick. Now it works. Oh yeah, there we go. There comes the cherries. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I already know the things I want to do. First of all, there is no sound effect when I pick them up. So let's do a nice sound effect. And remember, we had like this arpeggio thing that we said like, oh, that sounds good for a pickup. Well, now it's, it's time to shine in the spotlight. Pretty young thing right here to rock the mic. Um, yeah, something like this, and then go like, um, maybe, maybe. this seems, seems good, but now we're gonna add, do the arpeggio treatment. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah. Maybe a bit higher. Uh, I think it needs to be faster. Can we try different uh, instruments? Maybe uh, a bit. What if we? Oh, we not don't don't have the arpeggio everywhere. Uh, let us try maybe the different arpeggio. Oh, let's end with a with a slow arpeggio and begin with a fast arpeggio. Oh, that that's good. I, sometimes you have to play around, right? Uh, the end feels a bit bad. Let's let's. Maybe a bit f uh, too long. No. Let's try this. So this is going to be sound effect um, thirty. Uh, SFX um, thirty. Um, sometimes something that feels good is if we drop individual notes. No, that doesn't feel good. Uh, what if we change maybe to a different... Uh, let's try maybe some tuning. No. Oh, maybe. Nope. Nope. I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. Maybe. Nope. 
Let's something like this. Hmm. Huh, just just experimenting here a little bit. I'm not just trying different. I'm just I'm just like a monkey, hitting, oops, hitting a typewriter. Maybe steeper. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just sometimes I have to spend a little bit tweaking the sound. It's, it's supposed to feel nice. Um, I think uh, it, the I don't like the beginning. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, that's, I think, it's a pitch that I, I was looking for. Oh, yeah, okay, that, that, that feels, that, that's the right kind of pitch. You, you know that face, right? There is something I don't like about this pickup, and that is that it looks a bit plain. If you look at this, right, uh, it looks a bit like, okay, it's just a sprite floating in space. It, it doesn't look like a, a special magical pickup, right? It doesn't look like, oh yeah, wow, um, I need to pick this up just like some kind of cherry. It, it's, I think there is a, like a visual language with pickups that are always pickups. If if something is pick picking uh, pick pick up upable, if it's good, then it's, it should be flashing, uh, in, a, in a kind of like very bright kind of fashion. Not like the bullets are flashing. The bullets are also flashing, but uh, for <laughs> because they should so it should be visible. Um, but yeah, I want to have the pickup to be f to be flashing. Um, and in order to do that, I want to actually um, draw an outline. I want to draw an outline around the pickup. Um, let me go to the and we haven't actually learned how to do the outline. So so here is here is the trick on how to do outlines. They are a bit expensive in terms of uh, processing power, uh, but here's how you how you draw an outline. First, you set all of the colors to white. So you just draw kind of like a white stencil of the sprite, right? And then you draw the sprite moved by one pixel. And then you draw it again, moved one by one pixel up. And then you draw again, moved by one pixel another direction. You draw it four times offset by one pixel each time. And they're all overlapping. So you get like this blob of white. And then you reset the colors down to normal colors now. And then in the middle, you, you draw again your sprite, but this time it's going to be, uh, you know, with normal colors. And so all, all this white stuff that you drew at the beginning, that will be the, you know, the perfect outline of, uh, of your sprite. Let me show you the code and then maybe that becomes more understandable. Let's see about that. Um, so I'm looking for the draw my spur function. Oh, there we go. Draw my spur. Um, okay. Draw my sprite. And I'm going to uh, call this draw outline of my sprite. Uh, yeah, draw outline. <laughs> and then, and then we're going to ignore basically everything. And we're just going to take this, this, this one line that just draws the sprite. Going to paste it in uh, and we're going to repair it. We're going to re restore sprite x, uh, my sprite x, and my sprite y as the source of where um, where the position comes from. Like so it, this will just draw the sprite. And so, um, as I said, I'm going to draw the sprite four times, but uh, each time offset in a different direction. So plus one on the x, minus one on the x, plus one on the y minus one on the y. So we draw the sprite four times. Let's see how that looks like. 
Uh, I'm going to go to the draw function and then when we draw cherries, yeah, drawing pickups. Instead of the regular draw sprite, I'm going to use this draw outline. Uh, we're not doing this is not the, 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 the final just like to just to maybe maybe you will see the how, how that looks like oh I have to actually make this spawn see now, now it's like this <laughs> oh it's a stick cherry <laughs> chunky cherry <laughs> because it's just like the cherry and you kind of like draw it multiple times and move it around so it kind of like gets thick um and then what we can do here is um where we did where did we do this uh yeah when we're flashing right here and right underneath there's this code that makes everything white we're going to use this we're going to make everything white we're going to draw the outline um then we're going to use the pal statement without any arguments that is the one that changes around shuffles around the colors but without any statement without any arguments it will reset the colors to normal uh, and then we're just gonna draw the uh, the sprite again in normal in the center. We use using it to draw draw my sprite function. And this should get us cherries with a uh, white outline. There we go. Now this is not flashing. This is just a white outline. But in order to get it flashing, we do something like local my call. Uh, equals um, seven. So we're gonna have a helper variable that starts with seven. Seven is white. And then we're gonna go if t modulo two, remember that trick? T modulo, let's go t modulo four is smaller than two, then, um, then my call is equal, uh, let's gonna let's make it flash pink. Let's see how that works. 14 was pink. Well, that doesn't work. Oh, yeah, because we're not using the my call. <laughs> so we actually want to use the my call here. And this is the loop that resets all of the colors to a certain color. And so far it was seven. So it was resetting all of the colors to, to white. But we now we're going to reset it to this color that alternates between two different shades. Yeah, now, it, now it's blinking. Uh, let me try maybe a different color here. Let me try um, uh, uh, eight. No, that's too 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 crazy. Let's let's go with fourteen. But maybe uh, the the blinking is faster. No, that that's that's too crazy of a blinking. So let us. Uh, reset this to four, ah, four, one, and seven, and fourteen. I think these these might be good. I just wanted to experiment with different things. But now you can see, like this looks like a pickup, right? This, the flashing indicates that this is not just like some cherry. This is a, a special symbol that that means something, right? Okay, so this is uh, oh, there's another thing. When I'm uh, picking up a pickup in this moment. I wanted to actually do a um, a small wave there. So uh, what was the function for that? Um, small wave. there we go. Um, actually, we might expand this small wave with a with a sh uh, call, uh, and we're gonna say like if call uh, equals nil, then uh, call equals uh, nine. That was nine was default um, shwave color. It was um, this orange. And then we're gonna um, plug this into the color of the shwave. So now we can control the, the colors of the shwave. Um, but we don't have to update all of the calls of the shwave that we already had previously. It's just uh, um, if there is the third um, argument is not supplied, if call is set to, uh, to nil, and then we're gonna make it default to nine. And we're just gonna plug it directly into the color. So that's how we're gonna control the color of the shwaves. And then I want to uh, update function where when the pickup and the ship collides, I wanna just do a shwave there uh, at the position where the pickup was. 
So mypick.x, mypick.y, and the color, uh, let's make it white first and see how that looks like. Um, white is too crazy, let's go pink. Uh, uh, also, I feel like it's not exactly centered. Uh, we have to add a plus four, I think, to those, to the position of the, because it, again, it's the problem that it's on the top left corner. So it didn't feel like the actual cherry was blocking. Yeah, okay, now, now this looks good. Okay, yeah, this, this feels good now. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more thing, I don't want, obviously, every enemy to, to, to spawn, uh, 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 pick up only certain, like only uh, sometimes, right? So let's go something like, if uh, R&D uh, is smaller than 0 0.2 or something like this, then, so only uh, every fifth enemy will draw a, uh, will drop a pickup. And then maybe we can do something like when we uh, hit an enemy during an attack, then maybe the chance of, of dropping a pickup will increase. I'm just gonna play through a level to see how many pickups we're gonna we're gonna get. Maybe a bit too many. Uh, let's go 0 0.1. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. Still. Okay, we've got three cherries in the first level. Maybe that's a little bit too much. We're gonna tweak this later on. I'm gonna reset it to maybe, uh, let's go do a little something in between 1.5. We're gonna look at this later on because this episode has been going for quite a while and I'm gonna move on. We're gonna move on to the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. We can pick pickups now, right? Uh, but the question is now, what do the pickups do? We haven't actually decided what the pickups do. We haven't actually thought about what the pickups do. So this is going to be a challenge for you guys. Figure out what the pickups do and do it. This is a bit of a game design challenge as well. Like what is the thing that you want the pickups to do? What what can you come up with? Maybe there's some games, some shmups that you are familiar with where there's pickups. Maybe the pickups will upgrade your weapons or something like this. Or maybe they will actually change the weapons that you have. Or maybe they give you some additional abilities or maybe there's uh, it's just points. It's, it doesn't have to be too creative. Um, pick something that is actually within your capabilities. It's more important to do something that you can do. Again, the crayons idea, right? It's more important to think about the thing that you can do with the skills you have than to aim for something that is completely outside of your um, of your comfort zone. This is all about having fun uh, being creative here, right? All right, so this was this episode. Um, at the end of each episode, I always say a big thank you uh, to the people who make this show possible and I do it here again. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs. Yes, yes, that's right. All right, so I wasn't able to get through, it was a bit fast at the end, I'm sorry, but I wasn't able to, I was, I thought I could get through all of the things that I want to do with the pickups. I thought we can actually implement them and, and make them work, but we couldn't because I mean, there's just so much that we have to talk about. But we learned how to do outlines. Uh, we, you know, went again through this loop of creating objects and colliding with them and so forth. We did some pixel art, we designed levels. We did a lot of things today. And in the next episode, we are gonna actually get to use the pickups. It's gonna be exciting. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.